this update is huge and there's a lot to cover so let's get into it i'm so excited for this all right everybody if you're interested in darkest dungeon news or let's plays or any information about darkest dungeon 2 as it goes through the early access process do make sure to go ahead and leave a subscription on the channel it helps me out loads it's super free for you and i'm going to be covering any and all news that comes out for the game i do daily let's plays that are posted on the channel let's get in to this next update this is the altar of hope update now this was hinted at in the bounty hunter update notes that came out uh i think a week or two ago uh, i will link to those in an info card above me somewhere or to the that way somewhere over there wherever it's going to be now this update hasn't dropped yet but this is just the blog post is posted today september 22nd uh, and they have said that the update will be coming next week so we have some time to kind of digest here because there is there's a lot. This is this is definitely the biggest update that the game has seen to date. Might be the biggest overall update to the game that we see as far as like mechanics go. This update will probably get a lot of people who are kind of on the edge about it or weren't feeling really good about the way Darkest Dungeon 2 was going. I think this update will bring them back. This is a really good update. It's going to show us a lot about how the game is going to feel and work when it's finally released. So let's kind of get into all the different aspects of it. So really what this update is is the faded progression update and the main thing that it's going to be changing is the meta progression to the game so a lot of stuff going on here as you can see we've got some interesting artwork going on we'll kind of get more into this in a bit but first and foremost is going to be currency system for this meta progression or just progression update in general and how that's going to be changing so if you've been playing or following along with darkest dungeon 2 you know that the current progression system which uses a, a point system called hope is linear essentially you do a run you get as far as you can you beat the game whatever the case is and you get a calculated score at the end of it which is hope and that hope goes towards a progression a level progression for your profile as you progress you unlock new quirks new diseases new trinkets new items that all get added to the loot pool and you also unlock heroes as you go well that system is being done away entirely the new currency that we're going to be dealing with is called candles of hope so it's it's a development of the hope system and basically as you do runs you're going to earn these candles i don't know at what rate you're going to be earning them i have some speculation we can talk about that in a little bit but as you can read here on the blog post which by the way i will link this blog post down in the description below if you're interested in it uh the candles of hope will be collected by completing objectives, progressing through areas, and defeating, defeating evils along the way. Candles will only ever be earned through playing. You won't be able to purchase them, so you have to actually progress. You actually have to do things in the game in order to earn these. There's not going to be a, a pay-to-win kind of function for these things. Uh, in true Darkest Dungeon fashion, the best results come from daring deeds. You'll also need to choose when to take safer paths. Now, so one of the big things that we're going to be seeing added to this is a new risk-reward system for runs. And one of the big parts of that is the ability to, as they call it here, cash out on the run. And what that essentially means is that if you reach an inn, you can now end the run without any negative effects. So essentially, if you get to an inn, you've had a really rough run, you're really not feeling the synergies, maybe you lost a character along the way, maybe you just haven't gotten enough mastery points, and you think that going through the next region is going to be kind of a death sentence, you can choose to leave early. Very similar to how you could leave a dungeon in Darkest Dungeon 1, except you don't get any penalties for this. If you leave the dungeon or leave the run from the inn, you will keep whatever candles you have earned so far on that journey. And this is, this is good. This basically means that uh, while the game may be getting very difficult towards the end you have that option you've made it this far it's okay to leave go ahead and upgrade your stuff back at the the altar of hope and then you can go ahead and do it again and hopefully get further make it a little easier do better next time you can also choose to risk it like they say here but essentially if your team gets uh if you end up abandoning a run or you lose a team mid run, you actually get wiped. The uh, there will be a negative effect. You will lose some of the candles that you have earned and therefore won't be able to spend them. And then they, they talk about even if you reach the mountain, you will keep every candle that you've earned. So just getting to the final region means that you're good. Even if you don't beat the final boss, 
you will get every candle that you've earned. And I think that's a pretty cool take on it. Essentially, it means that, you know, most likely many times you're probably not going to win. I know a lot of people, especially against the, the chapter two boss, have been struggling a lot to get wins consistently. When it comes to your meta progression, that's not going to affect you. Now, there's some other things that beating the final boss will actually give you that's being added into this. And we'll talk about that a little bit further down. But for the most part, you will at least get to keep all those resources that you've earned along the way. And I think that's really good. I think they make sure that players don't feel like they've gotten that far for nothing. There is still something to gain from getting that far. You know, there's no point in leaving once you get to the mountain, like you get to the mountain, you're good. If you die along the way, it's tough, it's brutal. That's fine. That's part of the game. That's part of the, the cycle from the roguelike game. So, all right. So the next big thing we're going to move on to is kind of the bread and butter than, of this. And this is the altar of hope. And basically, if you're a Hamlet lover from Darkest Dungeon 1, rejoice because essentially the Altar of Hope is a meta progression area that you go to in between runs where there are different areas where you will be able to unlock different things using candles, the currency candles, to you know, make your runs more powerful. And these are mostly permanent upgrades. There are some temporary ones. We'll talk about that again towards the end here. But essentially, they are permanent upgrades to different aspects of your gameplay that will allow you to have a better experience as you go forward, a more powerful experience as you go forward. So we can see here at the beginning of each journey, you will visit the Altar of Hope. It's where you invest your hope slash candles in one of the four regions detailed below. So there are four different areas that you can go ahead and use. The choices you make will generally not only help your current quest, but future expeditions as well. Through time and effort, you'll give yourself better and better chances. So we're really leaning into that roguelike aspect of the game now. So to start us off with, the first area that we have is general upgrades, and it is called the Intrepid Coast. And there's a couple different things that we can see here from this little teaser image that we have. There are five different areas that we can apply unlocks to. As you can see, they all have different total costs. Looks like 96, 69, nice, 92 candles here to get to the full unlock level for each of these. I'm not quite sure what these unlocks are going to be, but as you can see here, it says here the Intrepid cost offers a mixture of functional and aesthetic upgrades, such as bonuses when reaching certain locations, beginning runs with greater resources and pocket, increased inventory space, and more. So you can see here we have Journey, Resourcefulness, Renown, Companionship, and the Infernal Torch. And I think the Journey one is pretty self-explanatory. I feel like these are just going to be baseline uh, upgrades to your stagecoach, i.e. better space, maybe like some banter options. There could be all sorts of things. Now, resourcefulness makes it sound like this is going to be maybe benefits when you go to certain regions. Maybe you start with a buff in the shroud or you start with a buff fader, whatever the case may be. Uh, it could also be that you just get better resources throughout the run, maybe a better starting loot crate. Like you always start with that academics cat. It gives you two trinkets and two combat items. Maybe upgrades will make it so you get four combat items and four trinkets and maybe increase the value of those trinkets as well. Like you can start getting, you know, the, the blue or the gold and Available trinkets even as a chance in that box. So don't know what that could be, but there's a lot of things. I'm not really sure what renown might be. Like, I think that it could be towards, you know, if your team is famous and well-renowned, maybe when you go to an inn, things cost a little bit less money. Maybe uh, assistance encounters have different interactions because you're well-known. I'm not quite sure what that could be, but definitely some interesting option there. Now, going down, we have two that upgrade bars that are still in work. We have companionship, which is most likely going to be the pets feature. We've been teased this pets feature many times. There's also there's already things in the game that indicate that you will be able to have a pet. We don't really know what this is going to look like. I don't know if it's just going to be aesthetic. I don't know if it's going to have buffs associated with each pet as you unlock them, but it looks like it's part of the unlock system. So we'll have to hear a bit about a bit more about that. Now, the thing I'm really interested in here is the Infernal Flame. I think this is probably something that people are going to skip over a little bit, but I'm really excited for this because one of the big issues with roguelikes is the replayability at the kind of pinnacle at the end gameplay, right? Once you've unlocked everything, what can the game do to continue giving you a challenge that's realistic and difficult even when you have everything unlocked while still making you feel rewarded? And I think part of that is gonna come from this Infernal Flame unlock. Now I could just be talking to my butt there, but I think it's gonna be something along those lines where as you upgrade this, the challenge will get harder when you apply the Infernal Flame your stagecoach. So it may start off as it is now where it's just kind of an overall debuff to your team and a buff to the enemy team. And then maybe you get bigger loot rewards as you go, as you upgrade this, more buffs to the enemy. Maybe it changes some things about the run, like instead of running into, or maybe the, or not the academics cash, the assistance encounters, because they provide torchlight, maybe they provide something else once you get this upgraded. So they actually have 
more value in an Infernal run as they do currently. There's lots of different ways that this could go. I'm really excited to see how they implement these because I think this will definitely help towards the replayability, which is being addressed by a lot of these updates. So that's the Intrepid Coast. All right, moving on to the next one, we have the Living City, which is essentially the Heroes upgrade. Now, this one's a bit more self-explanatory, a bit more straightforward. Basically, from what we can see, every hero has a linear progression. There are levels, so you can see here, there's a bunch of them really close together, then some ones further apart, and then some, you know, kind of high-end ones here at the end. Again, investing these candles into, they look to cost 64 total. It looks like the Hellion actually has a higher cost. She's got 68, so interesting there that, that heroes that you unlock later on, that's something else we're going to talk about his hero unlocks we don't really know how that's going to work anymore uh seem to cost more to get those final upgrades what it says here is this is where you unlock heroes so you'll have to go here to actually purchase the heroes now instead of doing it in the linear progression going to be a buy-in initially to get the hero uh, and then you can start unlocking items essentially uh they're also going to get permanent buffs trinkets and some other surprises we'll have to see what those are i have some ideas but this is also now where hero pass are unlocked and so as you invest in candles along each hero's track their chances at surviving will increase dramatically so ba basically as you do this, the hero is going to get stronger. These are permanent upgrades. So as you upgrade these characters, they're going to get more and more abilities, more and more buffs, whatever the case is. We're not quite sure what they all are. One of them is that uh, is, a, is an increased death blow resistant is apparently is indicated here. It says note the increased death blow resist on offer. I don't actually see where it says that that's on offer, but apparently it is. But essentially, we know that there are going to be kind of upgrades for your hero as you go along. I think this is a really great idea. I think this is going to be really well played out. I think it's going to give your, you the ability to kind of focus on heroes that you want to it's going to also give you the the want to play heroes that you don't have so you can get their upgrades right oh i want to see what the what the grave robbers upgrades do do they make her more playable for me because right now i don't really like plays or whatever the case is i'm hoping that they're fairly standard up to a point kind of everybody gets the same upgrades and then towards those last ones i'm hoping for some kind of class specific hero specific upgrades like the leper getting less of a chance to blind himself or the highwayman maybe having a five percent chance to apply a crit token to himself at combat start like a, an ambient like that i think there could be some really interesting mechanics like that it gives them a bit more individuality even more so than they have now be interesting to see how this plays out but yeah that's the living city okay so we're going to move on to the working fields or the item area and we've got a couple more images here again this is a bit more straightforward than the other areas essentially this is where you go to unlock items combat items stagecoach items and rest items i don't know if they come in bundles or if you buy them individually from this second image here it looks kind of like you buy them individually so essentially looks like you you spend a candle to unlock one level i don't know if these costs will go up my assumption is that they will it will get more expensive as you go along but one candle into trinkets will unlock a trinket and then what happens is that item is then added into your loot pool permanently it'll always be in your loot pool so we see here expand your available pool of items stagecoach upgrades trinkets combat items in items can all be discovered here now once unlocked the item can be found in all future expeditions but here's an interesting note. You will also have that item added to your inventory immediately for the current expedition. And this is something I really like, and I think it's a pretty interesting note, is that a lot of times, even in the game so far, I've unlocked things and trinkets and items, and I very rarely, if not almost never, see those items. I've just never come across them because of RNG, because it's a large pool, whatever the case may be. And so this will actually allow you to play with that item in the next area. So that way, when you see it again, you have maybe more of an idea of how it plays and you're going to be more inclined oh actually i know how that operates because i have used it before so you have a 100 percent chance to use every item in the game at least once and i think that's just really good it definitely helps out new players as well because they can get something they may kind of read the note and go i think i understand how this operates but i don't know how that's going to work in the context of the actual gameplay let me go put it on a character and we can see how it goes and you can do that you know that you're going to get that the next run so pretty interesting there i think that's a really really good update to this area now in collection with that we also have another area called the recollection and this is just essentially a library of all the items that you have unlocked so if you want to go through and check kind of the tool tips for all the items and see what you have see what they do if you're a little bit confused you want to, you haven't had the chance to really look at it you unlocked it and you're like oh what did that say again i dropped it and i forgot you can go here and, and take a look at that so it's pretty good a little glossary never hurts to have kind of more information for people so yeah that's that's the uh, the working fields and the recollection pretty cool stuff okay so now we're going to move on to the big 
I think the big thing here, and probably one of the most unique mechanics that I've I've seen in a roguelike before, and something that I think is really going to put DD2 kind of over into its, you know, give it its own characteristic outside of this gameplay loop that's kind of been done a lot of times. I think this is really going to give it some oomph, and that is the timeless wood or memories and hero persistence. So I'm going to read this. It's a little bit confusing, and some of the information kind of contradicts what we know already about the game, or at least on this update. But you know, we'll have to figure that out as we play it. Timeless Wood is where you can spend candles to unlock memories each of your heroes. So got an Edgar Allan Poe quote here. I'm not going to read that because I'm bad at poetry. Hero memories. Our, he our memories have power over us. All right, I'm going to skip some stuff things here. Uh, memories only last for that hero's specific life and are wiped upon death. So keep that in mind. Memories that you unlock here will be wiped upon death. Memories are a more complex mechanic than the other alter and all unlockables due to their ethereal nature, but ultimately this will prove rewarding. Essentially what they are, um, from what we can tell, is that they are temporary buffs. Okay, so you see here each of the heroes are listed and they have memory slots. Now it looks like as you unlock more or you spend more points in this area, you will get more slots available to you, up to five. And essentially you can unlock one of these memories at the cost of what seems to be four candles. I'm assuming each subsequent area will cost additional candles. And this will apply some sort of buff to that hero. We don't know what those buffs are, right? We have no idea what they could be. I'm assuming they're statistics buffs, but they may be maybe more specific, more class oriented, more like more along the lines of paths, but just a bit weaker or just a little less convoluted. And you can actually, from what it seems like, is you can select from any of the available memories. So we, we see here they've got Paracelsus selected. There's three memories here. There's three slots available. So I'm guessing as you unlock these slots, more of their total memories will unlock. I don't know if that's actually how it works. I don't know if you have to go, maybe you have to go to the shrines now and actually unlock these memories for each hero so that we use them back here. That would probably be, I'm just thinking about that now because I was going to talk about what the shrines might be for. I think that might be what they're for now. So you can actually unlock these. Maybe you start with one, but you have to go and unlock the other memories and they will apply a temporary buff now we say temporary essentially the buff will stay with your hero as long as that hero lives but they also there's a little bit of confusion here so let's i'll just read this next part uh the goal of any expedition is to vanquish uh, the confession boss at the final stage that's the final boss at the end of the map and in doing so comes a reward beyond hope or sorry beyond mere recognition and triumph over one's worst nature any heroes who survive the final battle will retain their memory while their mastery level will be reset so their abilities go back to zero surviving heroes will also keep their hero path their quirks their name. Plus, heroes who survive a final boss battle can now have an additional memory invested. I'm guessing that means that you can't just buy all these memories at one time. They have to have survived one of the final bosses in order for you to use the second slot of memory. Right? So they have to have gone through and looped through the whole gameplay. These characteristics will persist until the hero's death. Now, this is where I get a little bit confused, right? I'm I'm wondering if uh, runs that you abandon or runs that you leave at the end count as deaths or not, because it makes it sound like you have to beat the final boss in order to keep all these things but it's also sounding like you just have to not die to keep all these things what what i'm thinking is that you get to keep your memories but maybe the the path quirks and name disappear if you don't beat the final boss you just get to keep that memory slot and then you're gonna have to go through again if you want to get the second level of memory unlocked for them you do have to beat the final boss we're gonna have to figure that one out in practice but this is a really really interesting mechanic i think this is really gonna lean into essentially giving characters kind of more oomph more more connection to you the player right and that's something that red hook has said that they want from darkest dungeon 2 is to not feel like you just have a roster of disposable heroes they want you to feel attached to people so the more you play over hero if they get really good they start unlocking all these memories they get maybe all of them done um, and then you lose them in some just bad rng fight that's going to feel really impactful you're going to maybe make different decisions you might even sacrifice other heroes at the cost of saving your hero's life so that way you can go back and okay that run was bad but we kept our one person alive or whatever the case is so definitely some some really interesting mechanics here. Yeah, that's it pretty much. That's the last area. Now there is this restoration part where it talks about as you invest hope in the altar, the view of the kingdom, which seems to be what this area is called, is the kingdom, no longer the hamlet, will gradually become as it once wants, whole and majestic. Perhaps all can be put right after all. So this is very similar to the hamlet mechanic, right? As you upgraded the hamlet and all the areas, the buildings would become more and more developed or at least less uh, in disrepair. They'd get repaired, they'd get fixed up, they'd look cleaner. And by the time you were done, you finished the game, you, you usually had a very nice Hamlet, except usually, you know, one building that you never touched or something just gets left by the wayside. But we don't talk about that. But yeah, so some very, very interesting me things, mechanics, whatnot getting added here. 
overall, from what I can tell in the Discord on Reddit and just kind of my own thoughts about it as a player that's got almost 400 hours in the game currently, this is something that the game really needed. And I think it's definitely, in all ways, I think it's in the right direction. I think there might be some balance issues. I think there's definitely going to be some confusion. There's going to be parts about this that don't work, right? That's all part of early access. And I think this is going to give us a huge benefit to understanding how the game is really going to feel in its finished form, right? This is this is a very, very core part of the game. Progression is huge to roguelikes, and we've been missing that from the game currently. All we've had is just kind of this very weak meta progression with just the combat cycle loop over and over and over again. Now we're getting something where you might spend 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes sitting in, you know, the altar kind of going through, okay, what upgrades do I want? And then building your team, maybe getting your memories together, figuring out what items you want to, you know, invest in, what, oh, okay, I got this really cool stagecoach upgrade. Do I want to do this instead of that? Or I just upgraded this hero's ability and now they can do this. That would be really cool. Do I want to play with them? And I think that's definitely going to give some more strategy, just some more thinking to it. And overall, the biggest thing, a lot of replayability. Super excited for this update. Red Hook, if you're listening, you did really good here. Appreciate everybody watching this. If you'd like, like I said, to make sure you're staying up to date in all Darkest Dungeon news and also just catch up on any Let's Plays, if you're looking for someone to watch, definitely make sure to go scroll down, subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any comments on you know this and, and the update overall and what you think about it, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know. Let's have a discussion about it because there's a lot of people who probably think this is going to be good. A lot of people who are going to think this is bad. We'll just have to see how it goes. So thanks for watching.